Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. In this week's video we're going to be talking about TIG welding with silicon bronze with a big cup and with a little cup and on AC and on DC. Also a little mention of Ian's flat Stanley. Let's get to it. Okay for starters here I'm going to run a bead with silicon bronze on some cold roll steel just a little lap joint here and I'm going to be using this uh, this big Pyrex cup. It's a Furic BBW. I'm just kind of giving it a little test run here and see what it does using alternating current with the AC balance turned up like above 90 and frequency at about 100. I do a lot of cast iron repairs using aluminum bronze using alternating current and I find that works out really well. You kind of need it on aluminum bronze because of the aluminum content. You have aluminum oxides that need to be broken up but works really well with silicon bronze or aluminum bronze if you got a machine like like the one I'm using here that you can crank the uh, frequency up really high and also the AC balance up to where it's almost like welding on DC. Like I'm above 90 here on the uh, on the AC balance, 90% EN. And if you're going to do that, if you're going to weld uh, steel using aluminum or, or cast iron using aluminum bronze and and AC, you want to start out with a sharpened electrode. Uh, not quite as needle sharp as you might weld some thin steel with, but you know something pretty sharp, and it's not going to ball much. Now this is this is from a previous video that I did using aluminum bronze on alternating current about the same settings. I'm just going to do a little review here because it's important to talk about when you're when you're using aluminum bronze or silicon bronze, you're actually TIG brazing. So what you want to do is use a technique that where you barely just flow the metal in there. You don't want to melt any steel if at all possible. You will occasionally and that's that's the problem with with TIG brazing is it can be inconsistent if you start melting steel in with the weld and if you start doing that you're gonna wind up with a brittle weld and you can get cracks and everything but w working forward and back like that it just kinda coaxes the uh, metal into the into whatever groove you're, you're welding. Alright now let's try a, a one here the same same cup, same gas and all that, but using 33 pulses a second. I call it the rule of 33. Everything set on 33, all the settings. We'll see what that looks like here. Same technique, just kind of moving ahead and then backing up and filling in uh, with, with filler wire. And just using just enough heat to flow it. I could probably back off the heat just a tad here, but that's the gist of it. Just trying to braze it, just trying to flow metal, not penetrate fuse but not penetrate. Uh, they look very similar and the big cup is kind of what did it. Usually uh, the AC will be a lot shinier uh, but in this case the DC came out just as shiny as the AC did. I, I believe it was the cup that did the trick. Now I did this little job a while back for, for a guy. He's restoring an old gas slash lamp here and he, he gave me this cast iron flange at least he said he thought it was cast iron this is an original flange but we're welding it to 409 steel pipe it's all the, all, it's the only uh, the only type material he could find that was the right diameter to slip in there and he even had to turn this on a lathe a little bit so what I do on, on a job like this if I want to verify something's cast iron first I'll I'll cut it with a file a little bit and see where I'm at see how easily it cuts with a file and then I'll pick a spot like that corner right there that won't hurt anything and then I will puddle it very quickly with a, with a TIG torch like it just as quickly as I can and what that does is it, it heats it up past melting and then quenches it cools it really fast and if it's going to get hard that will that little weld right there will be hard as a BB now not all metals will do this you can do this on mild steel and you can still file that but if, if, if something's got a lot of carbon content like cast iron does that'll give you a heads up on on if you're gonna have trouble welding it or not so the reason I bring that up is because I'm going to do the same little test on a little threaded fitting here in a minute okay so I'm good doing a little getting a center line here on these end caps these are some end caps I'm gonna get a, a punch on it and drill a hole in it with a hole saw and then we're gonna clean them all up get them ready for TIG welding. Now I'm actually working on some little Christmas presents here, some little piggy banks and the, the fitting there is going to be the snout and also where you can get the money out and I'm going to put a plug in there and I may just put a tack weld on the plug so somebody has to get a grinder go to a little bit of trouble to remove money out of it but this is going to be part of a piggy bank but just for the sake of instruction and video we'll talk a little bit about welding threaded fittings. Now there are a lot of different kinds of threaded fittings there's cast iron, there's malleable iron, there's forged steel and I wasn't able to really track down 
what this was by the numbering on it. It came from Home Depot. One of them in, out of the pack said China. The other one said Indonesia. So I'm, I don't have a lot of confidence that there's a lot of uh, consistency on, on their suppliers. So did the same thing here. And filing that little puddled area yielded the same thing as if it was cast iron. I believe this is malleable iron, but still got way a lot of car uh, carbon content and it wouldn't even scratch the little puddled area. So I know that it's going to be hard and brittle, and I'm going to probably weld it with silicon bronze. Could have just done that going in, but that wouldn't give us a lot to talk about, would it? <laughs> so I'm cleaning these up. They're, they're stamped, apparently, out of a hot rolled. They got a, definitely got a mill scale on them, so I'm getting them all clean to shiny bright metal for TIG welding here. And we'll just deburring a little bit there, too. I don't want any little kids sticking a finger in there and cutting their, cutting their finger, so... This is a flapper adapter. I've made good use of an old 4-inch grinder. I just keep that on there all the time. It's way expensive, but handy. And I'm going to put these on a turntable here, just for the sake of ease of filming. And here comes the first tack. Now what I do is I just barely puddle to get that first tack, because I don't really want to melt steel in there. But you kind of got to you know, it's, it's you don't really know where you're at until you just barely puddle, and then you back off a little bit from there on the on your foot pedal, and then you'll know you're pretty much in the zone for silicon bronze. So now I swapped from that big cup to a little cup because I was running low on argon, and piggy banks don't really require a nice shiny gold weld. So I'm using a number four cup here with only about actually only about eight or nine CFH. I, I do that a lot actually. If, uh, if the job I'm doing doesn't really require, the customer doesn't demand a nice shiny weld, sometimes I'll just, uh, you know, use a smaller cup and save my gas. And in this case, my customer don't care. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going along, going along. You notice uh, the, uh, the uh, subtle product placement here of the TIG finger. <laughs> but seriously, that was, would get, be getting really hot for me to prop a pinky on there. And uh, I have no problem with the TIG finger on. Now, again, you can watch. I'm just trying to coax the metal along, get the rod in there pretty often. I'm not stepping out very far at all ahead of the puddle. In fact, I'm trying not to get ahead of the puddle at all with the arc because I'm, I'm wanting to flow filler metal in there. Again, this is TIG brazing, not welding, so I don't want to get the arc out over the base metal. And that's one down and about four more to go. All right. What's up in the next week or two? Also, I've got some uh, MIG welding and some stick welding videos on the way. As always, thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. And visit the Weldmonger store and get yourself a tick finger. We'll see you next time.